What's the rage tail difference? It's all about the action. The rage tail line of baits has an action unlike any other bait on the market. It's all about the rage tail. So many body styles, so many different baits to choose from. And they all have the patented rage tail flange. It's the rage tail difference by Strike King. Welcome to Michigan Outdoors. I'm Greg Hackney. And one, one common question that I get a lot about jig fishing is, you know, I hear guys talk about missing a fish on a jig. And, uh, you know, for me personally, I don't miss many. I mean, occasionally you'll have one that comes off, that's fishing. But more times than not, if I can get them going, you know, get them going on a jig, I just feel like it's lights out. If I get 10 bites on a jig, I'm going to catch nine of them. Um, and it doesn't really matter the style of a jig. I'm just so confident when I'm, you know, catching fish on a jig that in my business, I need to be real efficient and catch everything that bites. And I feel like a jig does a better job of that, honestly, than any other bait out there. You know, probably one of the things that happens with most guys, like if you're, and, and, and fishing shallow, you, the, the hook set doesn't have to be as good as it does, say, fishing deep or making long casts. But what a lot of guys do, and, it, it, and it's a problem, and I went through this period of time, is we have a tendency with a jig to get overexcited. Uh, you, you'll flip a jig in on something and one will just, you know, you get a super aggressive bite and you will jump on that fish without going through what I say going through the motions. You'll forget about, you know, how to do things right. The, the worst thing you can do on a jig is to slack line the hook set. And, uh, and, and typically what that is, you, you flip the jig out there and it, it can be, you know, you can pick it up, move it and get the bite or, you know, a lot of times fishing shallow, that fish gets the jig on the fall or immediately and you'll see the line jump or you, you'll feel a hard bite and basically you'll take two or three cranks on the reel handle and, and swing on that fish. And what's happening uh, when you do that is that you'll have slack in the line and all of a sudden you get that sudden shock. You know, when you're cramming that jig into that fish's mouth. And what happens a lot of times when they get it, you know, that jig can be turned a certain way and maybe he doesn't have it completely in his mouth and by not taking up the slack on there you just rip it right out you know basically it's what happened so what i try to do uh and regardless if i'm flipping or casting a jig when i get that bite i'll reel on that fish to I, I feel certain i've got 90 percent of the slack out i almost want to feel the weight or i do a lot of times i'll actually feel the weight of the fish on the rod i do the same thing casting you know if i got that jig way out there and i'm fishing deep and one bites me, I don't get in a hurry. Now, I, and when I say that, I don't just try to get the hook set as quick as possible. And I know this from practicing for tournaments, that more times than not, if I, when I get bit, if I don't want to catch that fish and I'm just trying to find a place, and I'll try to shake that fish off, what'll happen a lot of times, I, man, I'll lead that fish around everywhere. It seems like he's on there forever. And then you go back during the tournament and one bites it and you jump on him immediately and you miss him. And I started thinking about that. I'm like, when I'm trying to shake him off, very seldom ever on a jig do they spit it out instantly. I mean, they just hold it. I can swim around. What'll happen a lot of times, I'll, I'll have one and lead him, lead him, lead him, and he'll spit it out. I'll make about two cranks on a real handle. That sucker will come back and get it again. That's how much he wants it. Because that fish can't reason. So his deal is when he feels a little pressure, or you picking up, getting that line tight, and he feels that pressure on that jig, that's basically what he feels when he catches something, whether it's a bluegill or a crawfish. You know, that stuff's trying to get away. It's just been caught by this big predator, so it's, it's putting up a fight. So when I pick up that line and put pressure on that fish, a lot of times what it does, it makes him get it even better. You know, then he just, he's trying to kill it, so he crushes it. Then I set the hook. And, uh, and of course, the deal is I, if I'm flipping with braid, it's the same deal. I want pressure. I like a softer tip rod, regardless of, I like a rod with a lot of backbone, but I always like a rod like this is my flipping stick, my eight foot flipping stick. And it's, it's, it has, it's soft on the end. So I can put a little pressure on that fish. Or a lot of times you'll get bit, it's a pressure bite on the jig. There'll be no bite. He's got it and you don't know he's got it. When I lift up and I feel weight, I just lean on him just a little bit and I feel him pull and then I set, and then I'm in position to set the hook. But, but again, the worst thing you can do when you get a bite is to drop the rod and pop that slack that's what causes the problems most of the time. Uh, and even like, if I'm, if I, the same deal when I'm casting, when I'm casting way out there, 
I mean, I'm getting bit and I reel. Because a lot of times what will happen, especially fishing deep and it's a school of fish, when one gets it, he'll leave the school because he doesn't want them to get the bait. You know, they're aggressive. And uh, so I, I, I just I just go start, I use a fast reel, seven to one. I start picking up the slack and I want that, I want to be able to feel him. And then I get a direct pull. And this is the deal. If I drop slack, especially using fluorocarbon or monofilament, if I drop slack, half of my hook set is wasted before I ever get to where the line starts to get taut. And then I'm dealing with that stretch. So where if I, if I cast out there and he bites it and I take all the slack out of the line, then all I have to deal with is the stretch because I've got all the slack out. And so when I move that rod from here to here, then I've moved that jig that far. So I know I'm going to get a good hook set. Where if I go through, if I've had to, I'm, I've started to swing with slack in the line, I've already wasted half of my hook set. When I set the hook, I get all the fish. I do that flipping or casting. When he bites me, and, I've, and I, when my rod goes low, there's no slack in the line. He's on there at that position. So when I move the rod to this position, I've been pulling the hook all the way and I don't miss them. I do the same thing swimming a jig. The worst thing you can do when you're swimming a jig is to set the hook on sight. Because a lot of times when you're in cover swimming a jig, you'll see the fish get the bait. I just keep reeling. Because typically swimming a jig, my rod's already in a lower position anyway. So I'm already in a position to set the hook. So when I see him, I just keep reeling, keep reeling. I want him pulling. And then all I'm doing is pulling the hook. I'm not snatching the hook. Now I pull hard, you know, depending. Um, now, if I'm using 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon, you know, and I'm finesse jig, same situation. The deal is I'm using a smaller, sharper hook. I don't have to set the hook hard. I just have to have all the slack out of the line. And that's the reason I just, honestly, I don't miss any. I catch the majority of what bites me on the jig. That's the reason I'm so confident in it.